darkness touched you. Everyone could see it in the hollows of your eyes. A gaze averted from life. You ran from it but brought it nearer. Led it to him. An endless suffering worse than death. And you wanted to surrender. Abandoned to find peace with the gods. No. The darkness won't allow it. So you will walk into the lair of the beast. Look it in the eye. And you will go to war. This is your mission. This is your quest. There is nothing else left.
The journey to Helheim is never a straight one. Each must find their own path. Align yourself to its secrets, and you will find yours. Oh, Senua, your father does not hate me. He just fears the souls in the underworld. He cannot see that they are already afraid. But I am their healer, and I must answer their cries for help, even if it displeases him. However you come to the gold-covered bridge that leads to hell, you may find it guarded by a giantess. She will ask your name. She will ask your lineage. She will ask your business. The Northmen tell of the warrior woman Brynhild, who leapt into fire and rode to hell to join her slain love Sigurd, and is challenged by the giantess. Possesses large dwelling places in Helheim. Tall are her walls, high are her gates. The name of her dish is hunger. Her knife is famine. On her threshold, all will stumble. Her bed is called sick bed, and her bed hangings are called flames of a funeral pyre. They say she is easy to recognize, half black and half the color of flesh, and her face menacing and grim. The gate is opening. Who is it? It's coming. That song again. Is it? Is it? Is it? Tell her. 
Yes, the source of the darkness. It's coming. This is your moment. doing. You're showing weakness. You're not a warrior. You're a disgrace. The gods will punish you for this. Pick up the sword. Pick it up. Fight the darkness. Fight it. Get up. Get up. Get up and fight. Stormy seas and lost souls. She's dreamt of this before. They say dreams are visions of our memories, thoughts and fears, as seen by our inner eye. But what if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake, and we only see what our inner eye creates for us? Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares? Maybe that's why people feared seeing the world through her eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. You fail the gods. You're pathetic. Rotten. Cursed. What were you thinking? Did you really think you could win? How stupid can you be? Everyone hates her. She's cursed. The shadow. Look at you. A warrior. Worthless. Weak. Pathetic. Go on. Feel sorry for yourself because there's no one left to do that for you. Everywhere. What's that? Take it. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Broken and lost. Just Do like it. your Go sword. On. Come on. There. <laughs> <laughs> so weak to ask this? Or are we just so afraid of the honest answer that we do not dare pose the question? Sometimes the answer lies in a memory, a feeling, a song. Thank you. 
soothed all the pain. I told you it was to trick you. I told you. Where are you going? Oh. See, there's nothing to find. Cool. Before she first met him, she was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but not like the others. Barely functioning, she rarely left the house. Her father's inbell made sure of that. Only occasionally did she venture out on her own, collecting firewood and herbs. Errands out in the Orkney Plains. That was her world. Like this one. Barren. And lonely. Senua, there will be times that you will feel alone and exhausted. Like a strange little fish swimming against the tides of the big ocean. But have the faith to let go and let the tide carry you away. Because the whole ocean is your home. And it does not ask you to swim against it. His name is Sigmund. His father's hall was built around a great tree, and one day, Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try, but the sword only comes out at Sigmund's touch. His brother-in-law, King Sigir, wants it, but Sigmund refuses him, so King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast, but when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. King Sigir captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his coveted sword, and readies them for execution. Death for Sigmund and his brothers seems certain. But the king's wife is Sigmund's sister, and she begs for mercy, and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel and lingering death. Chained to a tree in the forest that night, a she-wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. She returns, ravenous, night after night, until only Sigmund is left. The next day, Sigmund's sister sends a servant with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. But to what end? Well... That night, 
when the she-wolf appears again, you'll never guess what happens. The she-wolf pulls away, but Sigmund holds on. The chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister plots revenge. And for vengeance to succeed, even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to him. But their blood is weak and corrupted and they're put to death by Sigmund. So his sister hatches a new plan, one that is cold of heart and pure of blood. Sigmund's sister trades shapes with a sorceress, and in disguise, she lies with her own brother. She gives birth to a son named Sinfjotli. After a time, she sends him to the forest to Sigmund. He tests the boy, and finds him strong and fearless. And so they go to take their vengeance on King Sigir. But luck is not on their side. They're captured, and Sigir has them buried alive. As Sigmund and Sinfjotli are being buried alive, Sigmund's sister throws an armful of straw into the grave mound. Hidden in the straw is Sigmund's sword, the gift of Odin. They cut their way out of the grave mound and set fire to Sigir's hall. The king burns to death. Sigmund calls to his sister to come out so that she may live and be honored. She does come out, but only to tell him the truth. That she had slept with him, her brother, to beget a strong avenger. I am not fit to live, she says, and walks back into the fire. Strike vengeance from your heart, Cinema, as there is always a heavy price to pay. <laughs> He was a fierce and great warrior who fought many battles. But one day, an old man came onto the battlefield. Although shadowed by a hood, Sigmund saw that he only had one eye. The man raised his spear, and Sigmund struck at it with his sword, but the sword shattered into pieces. Sigmund then knew that this was Odin, and thus that victory could not be his. He bowed his head and accepted his end. Dying, he tells his wife that she is with child, and that her son will one day make a great weapon out of the fragments of his sword. The sword named Gram. She mimicked him, perfecting her own secret dance. Wishing those fleeting moments of light would stretch out to last forever. How does 
she so effortlessly caught the world in bliss. If only she could do the same. See the world through eyes anew. And dance with it. Just like he does. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I'm not... I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait. Who taught you to fight like that? No one. <laughs> no one? Well, I... I watched you, and... You... Learned all of that from watching me? <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. Me? I'm Dillian. I'm here for the warrior trials. Just come and watch. And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who's supposed to reassure you. Make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. But her world changed the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide, and don't tell her. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Shut up! It's 
name is Gramra. It was forged by the god of all Northmen, Odin, and gifted to Sigmund, a great warrior. I need this sword. It's important. Can you help me? The sword appears whole, but it is an illusion. It shattered into shards long ago. It is said the great warrior can reforge Gramra by answering the trials of Odin, one for each shard. The roots of the Tree of Death will take you to new lands where you will face the trials. Go to the shards. Go to the shard. Go to the shards. What's the shard? Find it. It's the metal room stones. It's in front of you. Find it. The metal. The runes. You need that sword. Go to the shard. that their all-father, Odin, gave his eye in exchange for a drink from Mimir's well, the well of wisdom. In blindness there can be wisdom. Only by giving can you receive in return. For this reason, I give my life and pass on my stories of the Northmen to you, Senua. They've gone. I'm still here. It's so quiet. So dark. It's okay. Listen to your own breath. <sighs> Feel it rise and fall. Good. Be aware of everything you hear and feel. Let your senses guide you. somewhere else now. But the breeze has gone. Use all of your senses. Let the world speak to you. What do you hear? I hear water. Go to it. I've reached the water. Good. That's your way out. Follow it upstream. I'm so sorry. I thought I left this all behind. Don't be sorry. It's not your fault. He was right. It's inside of me. It won't let me go. Shenor. My father. He taught me that the hardest battles are fought in the mind, not the soul. You're no coward. You proved that to me in the warrior trials. This is just another battle. You can beat it. 
This isn't your bed. You don't have to help me. I want to. Besides, you are going to be a great warrior one day. You need people like you. Okay. I'll do my best. Following me. Leave it behind. Darkness is testing you. But you are in control. As well. Don't turn back. You're getting close. Tell you. Help me. She could spend hours, days even, trapped within herself.
You see me? Yes. Your eyes were open, but you were... gone. And when it finally let her go, she could be anywhere, with no memory of how she got there. When it comes for me, I have no power over it. But here, for the first time, Someone was there to help. But I heard your voice. You brought me back. You found your own way back. All you needed was a little help. A little hope. king in the north forced the dwarves to make a sword that would never fail and never rust and that would slice through iron and stone and bring victory to its bearer. But the angry dwarves cursed it. It would be the death of a man every time it was drawn and it would be the death of the king. Let me tell you about the sword Tyrving. I don't recognize this place. Where are we? Where is she? It feels wrong. Where are we now? Burial mound. So strange that we go to such lengths to bury death. Something so very ordinary. Inevitable. It's as if we conspire to hide death because we have no answer for it. But when it comes and it forces itself onto our friends or loved ones, then comes the reckoning. for the trials, like when we first met, remember? There he is. There he is. Dillian, there he is. Finally. You found him. What's wrong? He's gone. What happened? Can you hear me? How did you let him go? You let Just wait there. I'll find you. Nothing. Was that 
voices. It's not his voice, or the voice of the dead. Not Dillian. Dillian's calling to you. Can Where you hear him? Where is he? He sounds like he's getting further away. <gasps> Have you lost him? Senua, you remind me of a story that the Northmen tell about a young woman warrior. Her name is Herver, the daughter of a berserker born after he was killed. She's a wild, willful child who teaches herself to fight with weapons. When she learns where her father is buried, her only desire is to reclaim the treasure buried with him, but above all, the sword, Tyrvin. Herver disguises herself as a man to join a band of warriors, and soon becomes their leader. When they come to the island where her father is buried, her men do not want to go ashore. They say that evil haunts the island, and that it is a worse place by day than other places are by night. Fearless, she lands alone. There are many grave mounds, and all of them have ghostly flames burning over them. She comes to the grave mound of her father after passing through these ghostly fires as though they were mist. The flames I passed through were real enough. Damn the Northmen to hell. <gasps> The voice is getting louder. Listen, Dillian. <gasps> listen, listen, listen. It's him. Listen. It's getting louder. There he is. <sighs> Keep going. Send him follow the voice. You're nearly there. Dillian's voice. It's him. He's going to save you. Find the voice. Find him. It's not him. It's not him. We told you. We told you it was a trick. It's not him, it can't be. It's that sound, the voice is changing. What? <gasps> That's not Dillian. That doesn't sound like Dillian. Within the burial mound, Herver calls on her father to wake from death and bring her his sword. She says that it is not seemly for the dead in their grave mounds to bear valuable weapons. Her father answers with words of warning. You go to your doom. Baleful runes surround you. You have gone mad. You have lost your mind. Your thoughts are confused. It is dangerous to wake the dead. Like I said, she reminds me of you. <laughs> yeah. Herver ignores her father's warnings. The grave mound opens, and it seems to be full of fire. Again, Herver demands her inheritance, but her father warns her that the sword is cursed and would be the bane of her family. But he relents and brings her the sword. She leaves the island with it, but the curse holds true, and death would follow in the years to come. And so, Senua, the misdeeds of a father have cursed his daughter. That voice, 
It's not there yet. If only we could see life through each other's eyes, there would be no hatred. But we only hate what we fear. We only fear what we cannot see. Your father... And I will keep on trying, but his gods will not let him avert his gaze. But if he could... He would know not to turn his anger on us. I'm leaving. I've decided. I think it will be good for me. It's the darkness. It's speaking through. No, Dad, it's me. I think I can beat it. In my own way. I can see the darkness in your eyes, child. I met a boy. Boy. The chief and son. No. He said he could help me. It's a trick. He said it could be normal. Normal? Yes. No boy is going to save you. No one can. When they see the rot growing no. inside you, no. they will turn their back on you. The gods can only fix you through my hand. You're going nowhere. No. You will not defy the gods. Come, child, take my hand. Come, send one. No! I am leaving! You cannot escape the darkness. Your curse will make everyone suffer. You will have blood on your hands! What if this is pointless? What if you're wrong? What does that have to do with the sword? What if we're wrong? The sword will never be yours. <laughs> You've been fooled before, you could be fooled again. You don't know. It's just their game for you. You never know which way it's going to go. <laughs> to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur, the second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, 
He gave fair judgment. Light shone from him. Only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world. Fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness. Swear an oath not to harm her son. One by one, they each make their vow. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him, Baldur's mother boasts. Only Loki, father of Hela, the mistress of death, is not amused. You can feel it. You need the runes to fight Dillian. You need Dillian. He's waiting for you. He always said you He he's close. He cares about you. He is close. He loves you. Calling you. Dillian. Dillian, we're here. Dillian. We're nearly here. We're once seemed so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further. To 
peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the glow. And Senno explored new paths into the unknown. The gods feast and rejoice and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, Is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe, Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. Oh dear. Villian saved her. You owe your life to Dillian. Send you owe everything You've to him. Why isn't he here? He's gone. He's in the dark world. He's gone to the dark world. You're in the wrong world. He's in the other world. The dark world. Without you. We spend our lives searching for the meaning in life, and we ask the gods for guidance. But the truth to life is revealed when we can face death without fear. How can the gods understand us if they refuse to die themselves? Loki makes a dart out of mistletoe and goes to the gods as they throw things at Baldur. The blind god, Huth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taking part. Huth says, I cannot see where Baldur stands, and even if I could see him, I have no weapon. Loki replies, Here is a wand. I will tell you where he stands. And Huth throws the mistletoe at Baldur. It pierces through him, and to everyone's horror, Baldur is killed. And for this, Huth is slain. Let 
you astray. You should have listened to your father when you had the chance. Why didn't you listen to him? This love has tortured you, and it tortures them. Years had passed since she left her father. She trained hard alongside her friend, Dillian. She saw things no one else could. Patterns, shapes, movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Friendship turned to love. But the shadow of darkness never let her go. And she was caught between two worlds. That of Zinbel and her past. And Dillian. Future. Two realities. <laughs> tearing at her soul. What she think she's doing? <laughs> You're not special. She thinks she can. <laughs> they mean nothing. The way he stroked you. Gods are just toiling. What if the gods are laughing at her? It wouldn't be this. Be the first time. The Northmen tell how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship. But they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst into flames. When Baldur's wife sees his body carried onto the ship, her heart bursts with grief and she dies. She's put next to her husband and the pyre is lit sending the dead to hell. But even so, the gods cannot accept his death. He was the only one she could trust. Could she trust him? and she keeps fighting. Overcome with grief, the gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. 
Are they? asks Hella. We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur. Weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone, trees, metal, everything. Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let Hell keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise. Do you remember what it was to touch him? What if this is pointless? You see runes everywhere. Everywhere. But what if they're not real? What if they don't actually make sense? You remember the meeting the gods were lying. Tree. If you think it makes sense, but really the gods are playing with you. It makes sense in your mind, but it doesn't make sense in your world. The gods are you But it doesn't mean anything. You can't read this language. You don't understand. Sinbel was right. You're wasting time. You're cursed. Slow! Quicker! <laughs> she thought she had light within her. She is pure darkness. The Northmen tell how the gods punished Loki for Baldur's death. They captured him and took him to a cave. They fetched his two sons and turned one into a wolf, and he ripped his brother apart. The gods used Loki's own son's entrails to tie him down, and turned these bonds to iron, and dangled a poisonous serpent over his face, so that its venom would drip onto him. Each time the venom drips onto Loki's face, he writhes in agony. The Northmen say that is the cause of earthquakes. A reminder, perhaps, that if even gods must accept death, Was it worth then so must we. who believed nothing he couldn't see. Ellie happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms, had to see the world through his eyes. And slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. Go to That's it. Quicker. Quicker. father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. <laughs> My own father was born blind. He doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. <laughs> the word dark to him means as little as the word light. 
So someone is afraid of the dark. Should we fix them by taking away their sight? But you give up the beautiful world. You, and only you can see just to be rid of your nightmares. Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? gift that makes you so special in my head. Just another part of the person I love. I left for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it made it worse. I'm so sorry. Killing you would be too easy. They're taking your memories to torture you. They're taking them from the inside. You're and disappearing out. one memory at a time. Every time you remember, it disappears. They're going to take everything. They're not yours anymore. They're going to take everything you have. The memories of ghosts. They belong to the gods, not to you. They're eating you from the inside. They want to kill your soul. They want to crush it. You think they want your body. They want your soul. They want your mind, and they're going to take it. The memories were yours, but they're the gods now. Nothing is yours anymore. It's disappearing with your memories. I saw once a plague strike northern lands of ice. It was so terrible that not the oldest man among us could remember the like. Hundreds died. The sickness took nearly every person younger than forty and many older, and where dying mothers gave birth, the marks of the plague were on the babes as they came out of the womb. Where are we? I don't like it. This place feels... What is this place? Creepy. It feels wrong. It feels strange. Where is it? Where are we? Turn back. This is wrong. This has to be wrong. This place stinks. Ah. Uh, there he is. There Dylan. he is. The light. Go towards it. He's in the house. Find He's him. going in. He's disappearing. Follow him. Don't let him disappear. Why has it gone? Keep going. How do you find it? It's just a trial. It's just another test. You just have to solve it. <laughs> it's a test. Like the old warrior trials. Dillian will help me. The stench of rot. Do you smell it? No. Don't worry. Not everyone can. It was a warm spring day when she went to the river with Dillian and the others. But the water. She could taste the rot. But no one else could. She knew something was wrong. Something sinister. She begged them to leave, but they just laughed at her. But soon enough, as the bodies piled up, no one was laughing. And they knew that she was not like that. Senua, don't cry. The world needs people like us. Because we reveal the secrets that they are blind to. Sometimes when we dream of a coming storm, they may think we've brought the storm with us. What they say about me is not true. They are just scared. We must forgive them. We must forgive them. It's broken. 
fix it. You have to fix it. How are you going to fix it? You can't go. You have to find him. Quick, get to the house. Get to the house and finish this trial. It doesn't finish until you get to the house. Before he disappears, Senor. You have to get in. The Northmen speak of a death moon. A light shaped like a half moon that appears inside a house and goes around the walls. I once saw the death moon appear at a farm, and first the shepherd died, then a guest died, and then the farm hands, and then the farmer and six of his men drowned at sea. But that is not the end of it, because the dead return to haunt the living. If you see the death moon, then beware because there will be death in that house. That's it. You did it. She did it. It's not done yet. Just a small piece of the puzzle. You found a way. There was a Northman called Grettir, big, red-haired, immensely strong, but he was afraid of the dark. It happened one night that an undead creature came to his house to drag him outside into darkness and kill him. He resisted with every ounce of his strength. He clung to the doorframe, but it gave way, and they spilled out of the house, and the monster fell back, and the moon shone down on its ghastly face. Grettir, terrified, cuts off its head, but is cursed forever. From that moment on, wherever he was, he would see those hideous eyes staring back at him. Sometimes we allow our own fear to haunt us to our grave.
Shannon, what happened? They're blaming me for the plague. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? How would they know such a thing? Are they gods? None of us are. They're just people. Good people, but they're scared. They're afraid of what they can't see. Like children scared of the dark. They make up stories to fill the void. It doesn't make them true. What if my father was right? You have to step out of this darkness. Let them see who you really are like I am. You're not a monster. Without you, this darkness has made me a monster. You've done it. You did it. The warrior trials. You need that sword. Go get the sword. With grammar reforged, you will have Odin's blessing to walk a goddess into the halls of Helheim and challenge Hela as an equal. So Dillian was helping me. And a sword will lead me to him. Like when we first met. Dillian gave her the strength to pass the warrior trials, and she saw a way out. To leave her past behind, and become a warrior in Dillian's clan. Go back, go back, go back, go back. The sword is tainted by the gods of darkness. Leave it. No. He left it here. He wants me to take it. You will pay a price for this. Years later, with Zinbal's parting words still haunting her, the darkness came back with a vengeance. A plague. Do you? Everyone suffered. My father was not supposed to die like this. The suffering you've caused. This is your fault. <laughs> you brought this plague to us. <laughs> you have blood <laughs> on your hands. They're coming for you now. They're coming.
There's nowhere to run to. There's In the nowhere. sea of corpses, the corpse Your waved nose. through itself over the ones I loved. The ship broke up under them. The ship that had sailed from the land of shining fields. Their memorial stone is sacred. Come not here in the sun. Come not with a sword. Come not crying over a naked corpse. Come not with disturbed mind. Does your precious gift of sight let you see the souls that rot here in this sea of corpses? Do you feel the blood running cold on your skin? Do you hear their endless cries? Do you smell their putrid wounds? They were once brothers, sisters, and loved ones. And look at what you have done to them. All because you were a coward, because you banned from your curse instead of facing it. When you turn your back on your father, Zimbo, you turn your back on the gods and let the darkness wreak havoc on your people. Why must they pay for your heresy? Senoa, go to her. Answer her pitiful call. Focus now! 
Why do you still fight on? Maybe you two should suffer with your brethren in the rot and let your blood seep into the seas and the rivers of hell. Isn't that what you deserve after all you've done? Give the darkness what it wants, let it swallow your soul and destroy all that you are. Why are you fighting for someone who is already dead? Just look around you. What hope is there for him, even if his soul could be rescued? Do you think he would thank you for what you have done to him, to his friends, to his father? <laughs> gave up on her world to follow in the footsteps of her mother to go to a place where the darkness couldn't reach her Senua look at me do you hear that calling for me. We've lost so many. And I've lost my father. I can't lose you. You said it. I have blood on my hands. I didn't say that. You've done nothing wrong. Simba was right. Everyone will suffer. Zimbal is a fake. He is a hateful, bitter liar. He's poison. And his words still haunt you. Who do you trust? Him? Or me? Do you still believe in me, Senua? In us? Come back to me. Please. Don't let this darkness come between us. All she needed was a little help. 